So before we start, let's just go back to 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 Resi and see what we're doing to your to your piece. What was going on at that time? You know, at, at that point in time, and I think this was the the AUA guidelines at that point in time, and clearly the teaching. You know, my residency was two thousand and three to two thousand and eight. It was alpha blockers, then add finasteride, and the patients that we were doing surgical intervention on were patients that typically were either either in retention, they were having recurrent urinary tract infections, they were having bladder stones, or just were absolutely miserable that they showed up, you know, at your doorstep. And, you know, obviously for for better, I believe that paradigm is is starting to shift. And the AUA guidelines have taken some time to follow um, suit with with more, you know, I, I think aggressive is not the word, but more proactive intervention in bladder health and voiding dysfunction. So in training, you know, obviously we had a training at the VA and we did a lot of, you know, TERPs at that point in time. Our VA was the one of the first in the state to have a, a green light laser when that technology came out, the first generation. And so we started doing some green light TERPs at that point in time. But as far as minimally invasive, it wasn't on the map. We didn't do tunas or, you know, any of the thermotherapies that that were being offered at that time during residency. And and to be quite frank with you, I think the medical workup for BPH wasn't anything that was really focused upon in a lot of residencies at that point in time. You know, these were people that just kind of, you know, showed up in the hospital with retention or showed up with bilateral hydronephrosis or they showed up with you know, a bladder stone. And part of that's, you know, just kind of the nature of, of a residency program. But it is, a, it is a different situation than when you get on the private practice where a third of your patients are there for some sort of voiding dysfunction. And so, you know, that, that mindset has to, has to change. You know, that was the training at that point in time. Yeah, I had similar experience, like you mentioned, no, no talk about bladder health whatsoever at that time. Terps, open suprapubic uh, re- removal of the prostate, right. essentially that, a little bit of green light, or I, I got a little bit of green light by my senior year, but mainly as TERP, and it was, like you mentioned, those TERPs that are big problem. nobody in the community wants to take care of them, so just go to the ER, get a Foley, and, and then and we'll, we'll start from yeah. there. Um, most of the patients that we saw in residency, they had already a, a catheter. Yep, you're exactly right. So, so then, so you started private practice and then, so, so you have TERP, really no, not, not much minimally invasive techniques at that moment. You mentioned the green light. I think that it was a 60 watt, the first one, and then the 120. But then h- how do you evolve? I mean, and I, I'm, my, myself, I tried to just be on top of, of technology and just, not, not just from, from the patient's perspective, but from my own perspective, just to be ahead of time or, and to not get used to everything, to, to the, the, the norm, like to get used to just doing terps every day, challenge, the challenge, I, I will put it that way, challenge of new technology and just be ahead of the curve. So how, how was it for you? Well, I think you bring up a great point. When I came out, was doing terps for bigger glands and then, you know, green lights, you know, that was really the two the options that, you know, that we had. I too tried to stay up with technology. You know, I started doing, you know, in my training, I did a lot of laparoscopic surgery also and, and did some ro- robotic stuff and continue to flourish, add that to my practice. But when these technologies came out, you know, I, I felt like this was something just based upon some of the early data and some of the research data that these were things that we needed to be able to offer to our patients. And, you know, interestingly, oftentimes the patients are the ones who start bringing these things up, either based upon marketing or their own research. I mean, with the internet now, this isn't a situation, you know, 40 years ago where you go to the doctor and he tells you this is what you're going to do and you don't know if that's the best option or if that's your only option. Patients, you know, there's a, I'm sure you have it in your practice too, they kind of come in with what they think they should have and that can be good or bad, but Essentially, you have to be able to have the conversations about things that are cutting edge, things that are minimally invasive. And that's a buzzword, whether you're talking about surgery, whether you're talking about minimally invasive subspecialties as far as ENT and, and orthopedics and cardiology, you know, everything's kind of shipping that way. So I think, you know, as 
coming out of practice, you, you're you trying to keep yourself sharp in some of those early things. And so Eurolift, it was around, I think, 2016 or 17, where that really started to manifest itself as, you know, one of the minimally invasive options that were, that were, that was on the market. Yeah. And Neotrack, now Teleflex, they, they definitely did a great job in advertising and getting those patients in the office asking, Hey, I, I want that. I want that. That's exactly right. I, I had several patients ask me about it before I even, you know, really took it seriously as far as taking the next steps of, of becoming, you know, comfortable, you know, with that technology. They did a good job of, of not only marketing that to physicians, but also to patients that, hey, we have this litany of research that shows we can do this maybe a little better than, you know, the other options that you have. And maybe you don't need the, you know, the sledgehammer right off the bat just because of the side effect profile and potential complication risk of the TERPs, right? So they kind of hit from both, both sides. And I think they were very successful in that. Teleflex is the paid commercial sponsor of this podcast and is not responsible for the content beyond this paid acknowledgement. The Eurolift system is indicated for the treatment of symptoms of an enlarged prostate up to 100 cc in men 45 years or older. As with any medical procedure, individual results may vary. Most common side effects are temporary and include hematuria, dysuria, micturition urgency, pelvic pain, and urge incontinence. Rare side effects, including bleeding and infection, may lead to a serious outcome and may require intervention. Consult the instructions for use for a complete listing of indications, contraindications, warnings, precautions, and potential adverse events.